This video introduces vectors and basic operations on them. A vector is a quantity with direction and magnitude. Magnitude is also called length. Vectors are usually drawn with arrows. The tail end is called the initial point, and the tip of the arrow is called the terminal point. Two vectors are considered to be the same if they have the same direction and the same length. The position of the vector, that is where it's drawn on the plane or in space, doesn't matter. Please pause the video and decide for each pair of vectors, are the two vectors equivalent? The first two vectors are equivalent because they have the same direction and the same length, even though they start and end at different points. The next two vectors are not equivalent to each other. They have the same length, but they point in opposite directions. In fact, if we call the first vector A, where the decorative arrow at the top is a way to represent the fact that it's a vector, then we'll call the second vector, the one that has the same length but points in the opposite direction, we'll call it negative A. The next pair of vectors also are not equivalent to each other. They have the same direction, but they have different lengths. A scalar is another word for a real number, like 5 or pi. A scalar does not have a direction in contrast to a vector, but it does have a size or a magnitude. Now that we've defined vectors, we can talk about adding them together. If we have a vector a and a vector b, we can define the vector a plus b as follows. First, we move the vectors so that they're end to end. In other words, the terminal point of a coincides with the initial point of b. Then, we draw a straight line from the initial point of a to the terminal point of b to complete the triangle. That's our vector a plus b. There are other equivalent ways to find a plus b. For example, we could move our vectors a and b so that they share the same initial point. Then we draw the parallelogram with sides given by a and b. And the diagonal of this parallelogram is the vector a plus b. If we superimpose our two pictures, we can see that they really are equivalent. This is also a good way to see that a plus b is the same as b plus a. Suppose we wanted to draw a minus b instead of a plus b. Well, a minus b is the same thing as a plus negative b. And we know that negative b is just b pointing in the opposite direction. So we can line up A with negative B and connect the initial point of A with the terminal point of minus B and we get our vector A minus B. Later, we'll see another way of defining A plus B and A minus B in an algebraic instead of geometric manner. It's also possible to multiply scalars and vectors. If we start with the vector a, then the vector 2a goes in the same direction, but is twice as long. The vector negative 3a goes in the opposite direction because of the negative, and is three times as long. The vectors I've drawn are only rough approximations. To get a more accurate representation, I'd need to use a ruler or put my vectors on a coordinate grid. In the next part of the video, I'll be using coordinate grids for the vectors. If we place the initial point of a vector a at the origin, then the vector can be completely described by giving the x and y coordinates of the terminal point. For example, this vector has a terminal point at an x-coordinate of 3 and a y-coordinate of 4.
and we can unambiguously describe the vector as the vector with initial point at the origin and terminal point at the point 3, 4. A shortcut for writing all this out is just to say that the vector has components 3, 4, and we write the 3, 4 with this angle bracket notation. So the components of a vector are just the x and y coordinates of its terminal point when the vector is written with its initial point at the origin. If the vector is written with its initial point somewhere else, like for example right here, then we can't just read off its components by looking at its terminal point. Instead, we have to first shift the vector so its initial point is at the origin, and then we can look at the x and y coordinates of its terminal point, which here are 3 and 2. So this vector, I'll call it B, has components 3, 2. And it still has those same components, even if we draw it way down here. Vectors can also be drawn in three-dimensional space, as well as in a two-dimensional plane. In this case, the components of the vector in 3D are the x, y, and z coordinates of the terminal point of the vector, when its initial point is at the origin in 3 space. Please pause the video for a moment to find the components of the vector that starts at the point 3, 1 and ends at the point negative 2, 5. By moving the vector so that it starts at the origin, we can see that it extends negative 5 in the x direction and 4 in the y direction. So its components are negative 5, 4. In fact, we could have predicted that without physically moving the vector. The difference in x-coordinates tells us how far the original vector extends in the x-direction, and the difference in y-coordinates tells us how far the original vector extends in the y-direction. So we know our vector should have components negative 2 minus 3 in the x-direction and 5 minus 1 in the y-direction, which is just what we got before. And in general, the components of a vector that starts at a point x1, y1 and ends at a point x2, y2 are x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1. A similar statement can be made for vectors in 3D with three components. We can also talk about vector addition and subtraction and scalar vector multiplication algebraically in terms of components. Given two vectors, a and b, defined in terms of components, and a scalar c, we can define a plus b by adding the components together, a1 plus b1, a2 plus b2. Similarly, to find a minus b, we subtract the components, and to find the scalar c times the vector a, we multiply c by the components of A. Similar formulas hold for three-dimensional vectors. So for example, if we want to add the vector 1, 2, 3 to the vector 5, 7, 12, then we get the vector with components, let's see, 1 plus 5 is 6, 2 plus 7 is 9, 3 plus 12 is 15, which also happens to be three times the vector 2, 3, 5. Now you might be wondering to yourself, we've defined vector addition, subtraction, scalar multiplication now in two different ways. First, by drawing arrows, and second, in terms of components. So why are these two definitions equivalent? We can get a sense for why the definitions of addition are equivalent by looking at this picture. If A has components a1 and a2, and b has components b1 and b2, then, we, then the vector a plus b extends over in the x direction by a1 plus b1, and extends up in the y direction by a2 plus b2.
So the vector addition in terms of drawing arrows works out the same as the vector addition in terms of adding components. We can also see that the two definitions of scalar multiplication work out the same. If we start with the vector a and draw, for example, three times a, then whatever the components of a are, we'll call them a1 and a2, the components of three times a are gonna be three times as big. So scalar multiplication also works out the same, whether we think about it in terms of drawing arrows or multiplying components. Many of the properties that we know and love from arithmetic still hold for vectors. For example, addition is commutative. A plus B is the same thing as B plus A. Addition is associative. We can group in any order we want and still get the same answer. There's a zero vector whose components are all zeros. And when we add zero to any other vector, we just get the same original vector. Vectors have additive inverses or negatives. And when we add a to its negative, we just get the zero vector. All components become zero. Just like in arithmetic, we have the distributive property for multiplication over addition. And there's a second distributive property. If we add two scalars and multiply by a vector, we can distribute that as well. Scalar multiplication is associative and can be grouped in different ways, still yielding the same result. And there's a scalar multiplicative identity, which is, you guessed it, one. If you multiply the scalar one by any vector, you just get the same vector you started with. All of these properties can be proved algebraically by writing things in terms of components or geometrically by drawing vectors as arrows, but I'll omit the proofs here. This video introduces the idea of vectors, which can be represented either with arrows or in terms of components. We use both representations to work out ideas of adding vectors, subtracting vectors, and multiplying vectors by a scalar.